when did Raspberry Pi become the villain? Was it during the pie shortage when Eben Upton, the CEO, said they would prioritize shipments to businesses instead of hobbyists? Was it when the price of used tiny PCs like this one became less than scalped Raspberry Pis on eBay? Or, or was it when people realized you could buy a brand new N100 mini PC running full Windows with way more speed and expansion for only a little bit more money than a Raspberry Pi 5 with all the accessories you need to use it? A Pi, a power supply, active cooler, and some storage. But is Raspberry Pi really a villain in this story? And is this thing actually better than a Pi? And is it a good time to segue to a sponsor? No, it's not. Nobody's sponsoring this video. Everything you see here I bought thanks to this channel's patrons, members, and sponsors. So let's test whether this tiny N100 Intel PC is actually a better deal than a Raspberry Pi 5. And let's start by looking at the price of everything that you need to get. On the PC side, it's pretty easy. I bought this GMK Tech mini PC from Amazon for 130 bucks shipped. It comes with a 256 gig SSD, eight gigs of DDR4 RAM, 2.5 gig ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and even Windows 11 Pro. The box includes the PC all built out in this nice case and a power adapter. For the Pi, well, things are a little more complicated. You can buy just the bare Raspberry Pi 5 for 60 bucks or 80 bucks for eight gigs of RAM. It doesn't come with any storage, so you can either buy like a tiny micro SD card like this one for about 15 bucks, or an SSD like this one for about 20 bucks. But if you want to use this SSD, you also need a hat to plug it into, and that's gonna run you another 15 or 20 bucks. Then you'll need to buy a power supply, and this one's about 12 bucks, and for protection, the Pi case is about 10 bucks, or you could splurge for one like this one that's about 20 bucks. But there again, some cases are compatible with NVMe hats and some aren't. So already you can see a major difference. The Pi is purely DIY, some assembly required. But adding all this up, let, let's say I just go with the official Pi case, power supply, and a hat and NVMe SSD. For the Pi, that runs between 120 and 150 bucks. The mini PC, in total, it was 130 bucks. So already a win on the tiny PC side. And if you don't want maximum performance, you can get the Pi under 100 bucks just by sticking with a micro SD card instead of the SSD. And if you're like me and you run your Pis naked with just a heatsink, you can save a few more bucks and skip the case. But once we get everything, how's the experience setting this up the first time? And first, since this is already all put together, I'll start with the Pi. If you buy the actual Raspberry Pi case, it comes with this fan. But if you start putting it together, you'll notice that with this hat involved, you can't put the fan on top. So you have to figure out a different cooling solution. So there again, a little bit of extra DIY. I do need this active cooler, even if I use this official case. So let's get this thing set up. Get in there. Ah, there's one. And there's two. And there's this little teeny tiny fan plug. It's just like a, a regular PC fan plug, but super tiny. And then I'm going to get this hat set up. Now, there's actually about 10 or 12 different hats available. This is the Pineberry Pi Hat Drive M.2 hat for Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, but depending on which one you get, there might be different directions. So ignore this if you have a different hat for your Pi. There are also ones that go underneath the Pi, but that is definitely not compatible with this case or this case or most other Pi cases unless it's made specifically for that hat. Uh, so check the instructions with whoever you buy this thing from. Now, I have not actually used this hat with the official Pi case, so a part of this video is seeing if that's even possible. I'm not 100% sure I think it's supposed to work. One mission in life is to go through one of these projects without dropping a screw on the ground and having to fish around for it for 10 minutes. So far, I don't think that's ever happened to me that I have not dropped a screw. A couple little flaws I see right out of the gate with this design for this hat is... Uh, it looks like there's no pass-through if you do have a camera plugged into your Pi, which is something you can do with a Raspberry Pi that you can't do on there. Uh, you can use webcams and things, but you can't use direct uh, DSi, CSi displays and cameras. If you do that, this hat doesn't have a pass-through for that, so you'll have to kind of cram that cable in in a funny way. You know what? If I do this, let's see if this fits. I'll have to pull this fan out of here because you can't use the case fan with a hat like this. But let's see if this actually fits in here at all. Uh, you know what? With those screws, it does not fit into this case. I don't know if you can see, but uh, yeah. So to get it to fit in this case, 
I think I'm going to have to screw through these holes instead of like I just did it. So let's try that. Ah. Oh, the joys of working on Raspberry Pi projects. I forgot to plug this in. This is the PCI Express FFC connection. So you can see this little connector here. That little guy has to go into this little port. And that can be a little tricky sometimes. Will these screws go through? No. They're not long enough. But if I had long enough screws, I could probably get them to go in there. What I'm going to do is just not screw it in for now, and hopefully that'll work. Uh, we'll see if this case closes. It's going to be close. If I squeeze really tight, will it go? No. What's going on here? I think it's... Oh, oh there we go. All right. So, as you can see, there's uh, not a lot of clearance here. I think... I think if they do a second revision of this board, they should cut out some holes uh, to get a little more airflow. Because right now, there's airflow through the bottom of the case, uh, but the top is mostly blocked off. We'll see if that affects things in performance later. Uh, I also put this GPIO pass-through in here, and the problem with that is I don't know if that's going to fit with this top. Yeah, that, that kind of just hits on there. So. That's fine if you want to experiment like this and leave this off, but if you want to put that on, you actually are going to have to take these off. So, well, I'm not going to do it, but uh, if I just bent all these pins down or snipped them all, it would probably fit within here. Actually, no. Uh, even without that, this won't fit because these little, these little clips don't have anywhere to go around the board. So, this particular board and the official Pi case, I'd say no-go. It fits, but it's not a wonderful fit. Uh, but you could run it like this. There's no reason why you can't. And I just realized to put this uh, NVMe SSD in here, I need a standoff, because otherwise it just kind of flops. So I'm going to need to take it back apart, put this back in, and like I said, some assembly required. Come on, ah, push hard. That's how you're supposed to do it. Oh, come on. Let's, there we go. Yay! We got it! Raspberry Pi 5, ready for action. And it's always good to have a few screws left over. Right now there's really no database of like which hats are compatible with which, uh, with which types of cases. And a lot of times you're just going to have to 3D print a case, which not everybody has a 3D printer. So, yeah. I, I don't know how many times I'm going to say this, but the Raspberry Pi is a lot more of a DIY thing. You're going to learn a lot about small electronics when you buy one of these things. <sighs> okay, so on the flip side, here is our GMK Tech the box, and if I pop it open, we had the PC was right here. I pulled it out, and what else is in here? There's a some sort of user manual. I don't know. Don't need that. And then there's two more boxes. What's in here? Oh, look at that. It comes with an HDMI cable. That's something else that if you have a Raspberry Pi 5, it has micro HDMI. So if you don't already have a cable like that, then you're going to have to buy one. This one actually comes with one, even though I'm pretty sure most of us probably have an HDMI cable sitting around somewhere. But that's nice to include. Oh, there's something else. Look at that. That looks like... It looks like a wall mount, maybe? You can mount this thing on a wall, I guess. Yeah. Something like that. That's cool. Pi doesn't include a wall mount, so... Score one for this guy. That's kind of cool. And we have... This strange-looking uh, advertisement for GMK Tech. Oh, it's a warranty card, it says. That's it. There's no assembly required. That's, uh, it's out of the box. So if you're looking for a desktop computer and uh, you, you don't want to spend all the time putting one together, this is better. That's not what everybody's looking for, though. Uh, but that's besides the point. Let's see if I can get this thing open so we can see inside it a little bit. Yeah, look at that. Huh. So that's it. There's the guts. Focus, there we go has 8 gigs of RAM. Yeah, let's pop that out. It's a little bit tight in there, but... There's one RAM slot, so you have 8 gigs of RAM included. There's our NVMe SSD up at the top. Underneath, it looks like there's an A plus E key slot for uh, Wi-Fi. And it looks like there's another 
M.2 slot. So you could actually add another M.2 NVMe SSD like this one. It looks like it's 2242 size. Everything else is underneath the board, so the, the processor on here and all that. I'm not going to tear it down all the way because I haven't booted it yet. I want to make sure that I'm booting it fresh and I don't accidentally damage something when I'm unplugging. Uh, but very, very uh, nice build. And I, I like the fact that you just literally pop the top and you're in. Let's get that back on. Let's get these things booted up. First, I'll start with the Raspberry Pi. An interesting thing is you can actually use uh, a cheaper Raspberry Pi power adapter as long as it provides at least 3 amps at 5 volts. Uh, this one is a 27 watt adapter that provides 5 amps at 5 volts, which is kind of crazy. It's, it's, it's allowed, but it's not a normal thing in spec for USB-C PD chargers. So you can't just throw any charger at this Raspberry Pi and it'll work. It has to be one that can supply enough power if you want to do things like overclock or use SSDs. Uh, but you might be able to get by with the older 3 amp uh, power supply. And I don't have... This is, this is as far as my power adapter goes. Let me, uh, let me get a different plug. Okay. I have a kilowatt here so we can see how much power these things are drawing. Another fun thing about this is Raspberry Pis are designed for micro SD cards, so this actually has Raspberry Pi OS on it, and if I insert it, it'll definitely boot off of it. But I also flashed Raspberry Pi OS to this Maker Disk. I don't know if that will work out of the box or not. Some of these hats it does. If it's a newer hat that follows the Hat Plus standard, it should work like that, but it might not. And if it doesn't, then you do have to boot off a micro SD card, then change some settings on the Raspberry Pi, then move your OS to this disk, and then you can boot off of it. Some assembly required. So plug in the Raspberry Pi. And we have green lights. That's a good thing, no sparks. Always good to not have sparks when you turn on the thing the first time. Get out my keyboard. And we'll get this monitor going. For my recording setup, I'm going a little non-traditional so that you can see the screen capture. I have my little Ninja here. And it, uh, it actually has this adapter. It's a micro HDMI to HDMI. Otherwise, you'll need a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter for your computer. All right, I'm going to turn on Mr. Pi. Raspberry Pi desktop. Will it boot? It's working. Okay. Well, that's good. And one really good thing about the Raspberry Pi, uh, which boots into Linux as opposed to Windows 10, is it just boots up and you're here. There's no bloatware, none of that insanity. You don't have to go through a setup wizard that wants you to sign in, sign your life away to Microsoft or anything. And uh, let's pick a really good YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash C. And we'll see if YouTube is working. Where are the Raspberry Pi 5s? Well, one of them is right here. There, AI. And there's an ad. It's letting me do 4K now. Let's see if uh, Raspberry Pi 5 can do 4K. Ooh, we're getting some dropped frames here. I mean, it's, it's playing, and if I had a speaker plugged in, or if this monitor had speakers, that would work, but uh, it's definitely not the smoothest experience ever. The Pi 5 is actually pretty decent. If I switch down to 1080p, it's probably going to be fine. A lot around the floor is AI and, you know, co-processors, NPUs and things. And, uh, I know the RP so switch to 1080p and there you go, zero dropped frames. So it is a lot better at 1080p than it is at 4K. Uh, but generally speaking, the Pi 5 is a fairly usable desktop. It's, uh, it's Linux, so you're not going to have all the same stuff that you'd have in a modern Windows install. And since it's not x86, there's a few more hoops you have to jump through depending on what types of games and things you want to play. Again, depending on the hat that you buy, depending on the storage you have, depending on your case, all that stuff, some of it works together better, some of it works together a little worse. That's the tough thing about Pies. It's kind of like building your own PC. You can't just buy the parts and expect it all to go together. The first time you do it, you're probably going to have the wrong RAM, or you're going to have a setting wrong on your motherboard, or you're going to need to flash the BIOS, and that's not easy to do. But that's kind of how the Pi is, too, except for small form factor. This is like the pre-built PC. It's all put together for you already, and you don't have to do anything. Just buy it, slap it down, and hopefully we turn it on, and it just works. We'll see. I do really quick want to run Geekbench just to see how the performance compares with a very generalized benchmark like this. Geekbench is not the be-all and end-all, just like Cinebench and any other kind of benchmark. While Geekbench is running, 
I can check the power consumption. So single core, this is kind of like average use cases, the typical things you'd do with a Raspberry Pi 5. It's, uh, you know, four to four to six watts. That's pretty average. It idles down at around three watts. Uh, but this is typical performance, like when you're web browsing or, or doing things like that. And if I'm running multi-core tests, yeah, it looks like between 9 to 12 watts, something like that. So that's when you're doing heavier processing. You know, if you're rendering a video or you're editing video or doing things that require multiple cores, having a lot of browser tabs open will do that. And I can hear inside of there the fan is kicking up every now and then. But it hasn't throttled, so that's a good thing. Even with this thing covering the top of that case, the Raspberry Pi 5 has not throttled yet, uh, which I was worried about with that hat being on top. And uh, here's the results. Let's open that up. And so we got 605 single core, 1626 multi core. That's a little lower than I see sometimes. Uh, so I'm going to close this out, shut down the Pi, and let's try it on. Let's try the mini PC, see how that goes. I wasn't recording the sound for the past few minutes, uh, but I plugged this in, I used the cable it came with, and I immediately noticed one thing that's a bit different. The uh, the idle power on this box seems to be... Well, we'll see once Windows boots up, in just a moment. Who knows if that'll be like 10 minutes or 30 minutes, I don't know. I think they're trying to like scan my body signs and take as much data away from me as possible to sell to people. It's using 8 to 12 watts while it's booting, We'll see what it settles down to once it gets to idle, though. Initial setup process, the Pi is winning. I booted it up. Now, you know, if you have a different language or something, yes. And I did not have to agree to any license agreement for the Pi. I do have to here. This is... I'm not going to read all this. But I guess I'll accept it. I hope it doesn't say, like, it's going to take all my Raspberry Pis away. No. 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 It'd be a lot easier if they just set these to no to begin with. I don't know why they tried doing it the other way. That's just silly. All I did was create an account. I don't know what it's waiting for here. I do hear the fan. It's it's not too loud, actually. It's probably... it's a tiny bit quieter than the fan on the Pi. The active cooler is actually a pretty decent fan at, in terms of noise. Okay, we're definitely idle at this point, and it looks like it hovers around 10 watts idle. Uh, this is 2.5 gigs. I should be able to get that straight out of my switch because it is... I think it's plugged into a port that will give me 2.5 or 10 gigs depending on the device properties. There it is, 2.5 gigabits. Wow. Well, all I did was I opened up Edge and uh, no, I don't want any of this stuff. I opened up Edge and the fan kicked on. So you know that Edge is a little bit heavyweight. I'm going to go dark. And we'll go to YouTube. Already it's a little bit smoother feeling. Let's see if we can do 4K. And we'll go full screen. So yeah, definitely the, the media playback on here is, is a bit uh, bit nicer. There's one dropped frame instead of hundreds of dropped frames. And of course if I drop this down to 1080p it's going to be perfectly fine. I wonder, like, what is installed on here? It has Spotify. I don't need that has Office. I don't need Office. I don't need Outlook. So yeah, the ClipChamp, I don't even know, know what that is, and I would rather not have it. LinkedIn? Why is LinkedIn... <laughs> why is that on here? That's a Windows thing, but uh, let me grab Geekbench, and we'll get that running. And I'm going to grab Geekbench 5, because that's what I ran on the Pi. These are the single core tests on here. So we are doing single core, and if I look at the power consumption, so single core is already up to 18, let's see, 15 to 18 watts. So it is still, it's it's going through faster than the Pi does. You do get some more performance, and I hear that fan, the fan in here keeps ramping up and down, uh, more so than the Pi. Okay, now we're on to multi-core tests, and the uh, the fan in here is definitely getting a workout. And during those tests, the, the power usage goes up to, it looks like, almost 30 watts. to so 25, 26. Yeah, but it definitely, it definitely chews through a bit more power. We'll see how that power translates into performance once this test is completed. 
844, which is a bit faster, and 2430, which is also a bit faster. So just doing a little bit of uh, quick math here, it looks like the Pi is getting 135 Geekbenches per watt, uh, at least multi-core, versus uh, this little box is getting 93 Geekbenches per watt. So on efficiency, the Pi actually is winning. Um, that is one case where if you want the most power efficiency, if you don't need all the performance, if you're not watching 4K videos on your desktop, this isn't a bad option. So efficiency, win Pi. So it's not cut and dry. Assuming you can buy a Pi 5 at retail, which is 60 bucks for a 4 gig model and 80 bucks for 8 gigs, it's not a terrible deal. And I wouldn't buy one from a scalper for any reason, unless you absolutely need a Pi 5 right now. Otherwise, just wait. Raspberry Pi is making almost 100,000 of these a week right now. Uh, they're currently at a production rate of about 70,000 units a week. Uh, the goal is to get, by the end of this month, to get to 90,000 units a week, so that's you know, yep. uh, basically 400,000 units a month. Scalpers won't be able to keep up, so if you need a Pi, just use our Pi Locator. And if you don't need a Pi, then yeah, something like this little PC is perfect, especially if you just want a tiny desktop computer. What's even better is you can find N100 Mini ITX boards for just a little more, meaning you could build a full custom PC just like Explaining Computers did a couple weeks ago. Still not the same as a Raspberry Pi, but for many people, building their own system is what got them into computing. And that's awesome no matter what you buy. I know that's how I started, back when I built my first little 386 PC and ran DOS on it. I hate to say it, but the answer to which one of these things is better, a Pi or a tiny PC, it's why not both? They each have their strengths, and if you really want the cheapest option, the Pi 4 is still around and it's still only 35 bucks. So yeah, until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.